Hi guys, in this video we are going to be solving simultaneous equation using differential uh, the operator methods. Okay, so the first example is from the previous question papers. So this was taken from the previous question papers for Inisa Engineering Mathematics. So this question they want us to solve for x using the operator method okay so the first thing that you do you change this to a you change it to a determinant format so you're gonna take this value and this value okay so because they are looking for x so you're gonna put the x values there and the y values there and then you close this then you say equals to open the bracket so because they are looking for x because they are looking for x instead of you writing x and y on this side so you're gonna replace for gonna replace the values of x you're gonna replace the values of x here instead of writing x you're gonna write whatever that you have there so in this case you're gonna write let's name this q so let's name this values q so instead of writing x you're gonna write q you transfer the y to the other side so what i'm trying to say basically you just put e1 and e to the power minus t then you transfer the y values so you take the coefficient of y so the coefficient of y is minus 3 and t plus 2 right then on the left hand side you just transfer them as they are so you're gonna write t plus 2 minus 3 minus 3 t plus 2 so because you are looking for x you just put the value of x outside there this bit you put it outside and remember that where this x instead of you transferring them instead of you transferring like this you just put q instead of x and then because you are looking for x you put x outside okay and then then from here you just use the determinants method to solve this so you want to have d so whenever you go to that side you add you subtract when you go to the left hand side so you're gonna have d plus 2 d plus 2 minus into so now i'm going to the opposite direction so when you go to the from the top right to the bottom left you minus so you're gonna have minus three times minus three and then you put that bracket there say so x equals to you do the same thing this side so you're gonna have one multiply by two minus into minus three times e to the power minus t Okay, then it close the bracket. So here you will have d squared plus 2d plus 2d plus 4 when you remove the brackets. You're going to have d squared, d squared plus 2d plus 2d plus 4. Then you say minus inside there. That means visible color inside here you're gonna have a nine so you'll have minus nine then close bracket x equals to t plus two plus three e to the power minus t right that's what you're gonna have that's what you're gonna have and then from here you're gonna say you group the like terms 
So the like terms are this and this, and also this, also this and this. Then on the on the right hand side there are no like terms. It's fine. So you're gonna have p squared plus 4d and then 4 minus 9 you're gonna get minus 5 x which is equals to what is d d means differentiation d means differentiation d means differentiation so what is differentiation of 1 remember we multiplied by 1 there what is the differentiation of them the moment you have uh, d alone it means there is one in front so you've got something like this so you've got d of one what is differentiation of one it's zero so it's a constant you write zero write zero plus two plus three e to the power minus t and that's what you have at the moment so from here guys from here let's write everything that we have so you've got d squared plus 4d excuse me plus 4d minus 5x equals to 2 plus 3e to the power minus t 3e to the power minus e so this right here it's more like you have uh, the operator so this is when you have the operator so as you can see it's in the normal format so this will be your xpi i normally say this is my xpi okay so we're gonna take d squared plus 4d minus 5 and equate it to zero right we find the factors so we're gonna do the auxiliary equation of this and then the factors here will be the factors here will be 5 and 1 but you need to know if it's a positive 5 or a negative 5 so because we want to get a positive 4 there so it will be 5 minus 1 which is equal to 0 so d1 will be equal to 1 d2 will be equal to minus 5 so the factors are different so your you see because they said x we don't say y they want to say x c f because they want x you see there there is your x x c f is equals to c1 e to the power of, to the power of d1 x or oh, in this case instead of writing x there you see they set in forms of t so instead of writing x you write t say plus c2 e D1, D2, T, then your final answer for XCF will be C1E to the power of T, then plus C2E to the power of minus 5T. Minus 5T. So this will, this will be your XCF. Remember, the whole point of doing this is to get the X general solution x general solution which is equals to xcf plus xpi so now the next one that you're gonna do is the xpi so xpi you just go to the original equation this equation on the on top there so you're gonna make xpi the subject of the formula by dividing by d squared plus 4d minus 5 okay so we're gonna say 2 plus 3e minus t 
divided by t squared plus 4d minus 5. So just because you see here, you have got two values that use different theorems. You have got two values that use different theorems. So in this case, I'll just say 2 divided by d squared plus 4d minus 5 plus 3e minus t divided by d squared plus 4d minus 5. So this uses different theorems. That's why I'm, I'm splitting it. So because it's a 2 only there, 2 doesn't have any theorem. A constant doesn't have any theorem. So you just say e to the power 0 t. You just say e to the power 0 t. So you still remember the theorem for e. So the e says e a x. The theorem of e a x <coughs> tells you that a is equal to d. So where there is a, you put d. That's the theorem. That's the theorem for e. If your numerator is e to the power something, so it's 3, it's e to the power ax. So where there is a, you're going to put d. So that ax is a function of x. So your a is equal to d. So let's go and substitute. Remember the reason why I'm saying e to the power 0 t is because any number to the power 0 is 1. So it doesn't make any impact there. So we're going to have 2 over what is e to the power 0? 0. Where there is a, we're going to put 0 now. So we're going to say 0 squared plus 4 into 0 minus 5 plus 3e to the power minus t divided by so what is our a in this case our a it's minus 1 minus 1 remember the x replaces t so where there is t we put x <coughs> so you're gonna say minus 1 squared plus 4 into minus 1 minus 5. So, so the final answer will be 2 over minus 5 okay plus 3e minus t divided by so I'm gonna get 1 minus 4 so I'll have okay let me do it here I'll have plus 1 minus 4 minus 5 so this will give me minus 9 1 minus 9 which is minus 8 okay so the final answer will be the xpi will be equal to minus 2 over 5 okay minus 3 over 8 e to the power minus t then the x g s the x general solution the final answer would be x p i plus x c f then this will be equals to Take the XCF that you found earlier on C1E minus this one E to the power T plus C2E to the power of I think it's minus 5T. Yes, minus 5T. Then you combine it with minus 2 over 5 minus 3 over 8 e to the power minus t and that's how you do the general solution that's how you do the general solution uh, thank you guys for watching if you do have any question please dm me also i'll leave the whatsapp link with all the details so please subscribe and follow me for more
bisschen 